Agu. Yeah. Uh, what's your first Yeah. Okay. Uh, we all have seen that uh, the renovation is going on. Uh, they promised that by this time they would have finished. But I don't know why they haven't finished up to now. Uh, we have an interior guide here, called Yao. Uh, last November, uh, when I came, the same they have, I know they haven't finished with it. So we had a lecture. Now all that we want to see is the museum. And the museum have a history. As a result of that, we have Yao here who is going to tell us the history of the museum that we can see, but we can hear Ashanti history. He's full of history. So we're going to hear from Yao. Yao, this is Africa for the African group. And we are here to hear from you. Thank you. All right. Can we pick up but, uh, Don't worry. Don't be bothered if uh, you see him with the camera. Don't He's worry. not frightening you. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Yeah. If you can pronounce the proper name of the Palace Museum. Menchia Palace Museum. Yeah, people, when they look at it, it's, it throws them off. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. So it's Menchia. Palace Museum. Uh, this place was called Mensha because it was a forest and this very place was where our kings, our ancestors used to come and meet and think about the kingdom, take decisions for the advancement and establishment of the kingdom. So man means the whole kingdom has met here. Mensha means the whole kingdom always come to meet here. Good, thank you very much. So my name is Yao, and I'll be your guide for this brief session. Actually, as you rightly said, the museum is under renovation. Good. As we all know, in a Sante traditional system, the day that you are born, automatically, the traditional system gives you a name. Yes. Even before your parents name you. And these traditional names have meaning. They are more powerful than even the names that your parents might think to give you. Because these names come straight from the ancestors. I'm a Thursday born male, so I'm called Yao. So I'll start with you. Where were you born? Thursday. So you are Ya, and then? So that means you're born on a Tuesday. And? <coughs> Friday. Mm -hmm. And Saturday. Ama. Friday. Kofi. Yao. Yeah. Yao. Yeah. Okay. Ajua. Ajua Monday born and then Monday. Ajua. Ajua. And Saturday. Kwame. You see these names have meanings as I said. For example, Saturday and Sunday bonds. They are known to be givers of light. They shine. And they always want to come on top of anything they do. Monday and Tuesday bonds are known to be suppressors of pain and sorrow. <laughs> They are stronger enough to push away pain. And, 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 and they bring comfort to you when you are in that situation. Because in our local parlance, when somebody is wailing or crying, we say the person, ultra ajo. And now say ultra bena. So when we say kwajo kwabena, it means you are pushing away pain, you push away sorrow. Wednesday bonds are known to be beautiful and powerful. That's one thing about them. Actually, Wednesday is a sacred day. Back in the olden days, if you are an Asante female and you can't give birth, our ancestors will make a doll, a traditional doll, and they will wrap it around your, your back. You walk around the door for 42 days, which is one month, according to Asante calendar. Exactly after the 42nd day, you will conceive. Yeah. Thursday bonds are known to be brave and very heroic, very, very brave. Brave enough that even the final and the last Asante British war was led by a Thursday bond, who was also a woman. Friday bonds are also known to be beautiful and powerful. From the name Ephia, we have Afin, which is on the wall. That is a Dinkra symbol on the wall, like a fork. It's not a fork, it's, it's a comb, which is called Afin which stands for beauty. Where we are is the headquarters of the Asante Kingdom. 
actually when we say asante it means because of war that is war that yes war that is the meaning of asante because of war our ancestors established this kingdom because of war originally our ancestors were not in gold coast they were in a place called the old ghana empire in between timbutu which is now mali and gao which is now niger and they moved from there to mesopotamia they spent some time with the egyptians and with the jews so when you look at our Sante culture there is a little bit of jewish culture and is egyptian culture in egypt when the pharaohs die they don't bury them we do same when kings in the land die we don't dig the ground and put their bodies there no we embalm them and we take them to a royal mausoleum where we keep their bodies and every dead body have a room the same way the Jews also have an ark that their high priests go around it seven times. As Santis have seen, we also have an ark. On Fridays is a sacred day. As Santa King believes that when he puts on a white cloth and he goes around the Asante ark seven times, he is cleansing the sin of every Asante. That is one traditional belief that happens here. And when our ancestors migrated from the Egyptians from, and from the Jews, they came to settle at where we are now. Let's kindly look into page 18 of the book I gave you. Let me show you the eight clans that established the Asante Kingdom. Page 18. We have Oyoko. You can say it after me. Oyoko. Ekwana. Asene. Ediana, Asechui, Asona, Agona, and Bretu. Yes. You see, these are the eight clans that we have in Asante land. And these eight clans are the clans that established the Asante kingdom. They led our ancestors all the way from the old Ghana Empire to where we are now. And every clan has a totem. So, we will know that Kabna is from this clan based on the animal on top of his umbrella or on top of his staff. When kings are at a deba, there are always animals on top of the umbrellas or on top of their staff. If the king is from the Oyoko clan, the animal on top of his umbrella should be a hawk. Hawk? A hawk. If the king is from Britu, the animal should be a leopard. So this totem is what identifies them from where they come from in a Santa land. Is it a hierarchy of order? Is it? Hierarchy of order? Yes, because it is the Oyokos that is the royal clan among the eight clans. It is the Oyoko clan that is where the Asante king and queen mother comes from. Now, when our ancestors came to settle here, instead of them to form a kingdom, they didn't. They were divided. Because of that, there was a kingdom which was already here in Gold Coast. Their name was called the Dentra Kingdom. They took our ancestors as slaves. A time came that the king of Dentra was demanding that our ancestors should cut this little finger of theirs and bring it to him. The second thing he was demanding was that our ancestors should bring him their favorite wives for him to marry. As part of our traditions and customs, if you are a king and your hand is cut off, you will be dethroned from the stool. So our ancestors were like, they are not going to do it. The first Asante king we got was called Osei Tutu I. He raised sent a message to the king of Dentra that he's not going to cut his finger for him. Secondly, he is not going to bring his wife for him to marry. And that is how he said it. He said that, Sebrebre Ama, 
Amania Emma. Bri Bri was the wife of that king, Dinshua King. And Amania was the wife of Osiichitu, our king. So Osiichitu said that if in Tim Jakari does not allow his wife Bri Bri to come, he won't allow his wife Amania to come. Was he being defiant? He said, he said, was he being defiant? Mm -hmm. Like, it's a proverb now. Yeah, like, uh, I'm just not going to do it. Yes, I'm just, I'm not gonna do yes. It. So in a Asante land, when somebody tell you that, say, bre bre ma ma ma, it means that I'm just not going to do what you are saying, <laughs> as he said. Can we all say it together? Say, bre bre a ma. Bre bre a ma. A ma ne ma. That is a proverb in a Asante land. Now, this led to a war among the Asantes and their masters called the dangerous. But our sisters were not united. So then they came together with an idea that why don't we come together and form a kingdom so that we will be stronger enough to fight against the dangerous. They came together, they formed the kingdom, and they named the kingdom Asante, which means because of war. We only came together because of war. And this was in 1695. That was when Asante Kingdom was established. Now, they were all kings that came together to form the kingdom. That means that they should get a king among the kings. <laughs> king who is kings. called Asante Hene. Let's open to the first page of the book. That is the current Asante Hene. He is the king of kings in Asante land now. The first number, page one. That is the current king there. Now, this was how our ancestors chose King of Kings or Asante Hene in 1695 through the coming of the gold stool. Kindly open to page 16. Page 16, the gold stool is there. That is the stool on the throne. That is the stool there. Now, this gold stool is the symbol of Asante unity. This gold stool. It's what shows an Asante king for us. Because of that, whenever somebody is chosen to become a king in Asante land, that king has to swear to the ghost too before he will be accepted as a king in Asante land. <coughs> Nobody sits on the ghost too. The Asante king don't sit on the ghost too. The ghost too is the symbol of Asante unity. It carries the spirit of our ancestors. So much to the fact that even when the British was, were demanding for the ghost to, it led to a war between Asantes and the British. So when kings are chosen to become kings, you have to swear to the ghost to. And in our land, when kings are swearing to the ghost to, they hold a sword. And that sword is called Mpomponso. Can we say it? One more time. Page eight. Page eight. That's that sword is there. That sword is there, right here in page eight. This is the Mpomponso sword. It's the sword that kings hold to swear to the ghost to before they will be accepted as kings in a Santa land. Now, when you are holding the Mpomponso sword, that is the first sword and your hands begin to shake and your voice begin to break it means that the gods don't endorse you as becoming a king in a santa land and immediately you'll be disqualified that is why in a, in a santa land when a king die it can take about six months about one year before we can get a new king because a lot are failing the test in the 17th century, we got a second Asante king. When you open to page 17, you will see all kings and all queen mothers of Asante from 1695 to date. Bottom up. The second king was called Upukwari the first. Now, this king was regarded in the history of Asante as the only king that extended Asante kingdom beyond the borders of Ghana. So Asante is not only in Ghana. Asante is beyond Ghana. He fought all the way to Burkina Faso and added the Mosi people to Asante land. He went to Ivory Coast and added the Baulis and the Animes to Asante land. Right here in Ghana, 
he fought to northern part of Ghana and added them to Asante land. As far as in the 18th century, some of our ancestors went to the Netherlands and they formed the Surinamese community there. Because King William was demanding for soldiers. There was a civil war in his kingdom in Netherlands. His nephew wanted his throne. Let's open to page 10. So our brothers and sisters in Suriname are also part of the Asante land. Now page 10. These are the guns of the Asante kings. And we got these guns from trading with the Dutch. So there was a great alliance between Asante and the Dutch. So when the king was in trouble, he came all the way to Asante land demanding for soldiers. The, our king that gave King William soldiers was called Kwekudia. When our ancestors helped him to win the war, his nephew lost the war, and his nephew went to find Belgium. Our ancestors didn't come back. They stayed there, and they are part of the Surinamese community. When you go to Suriname, mm. they celebrate a festival called the Kweku Festival. Mm. They still do it. And they celebrate it to honor our king, Kwekudia, the first. So all these people, diaspora, are part of Asante land. In the 18th century, 1824, this was when the British started giving problems to our ancestors. They said they would take our ancestors as slaves and add them to the Asante land, to, to the British colony. In the history of the British in Gold Coast, it is only Asantes they fought a lot with. Eight times of battle, we won five, they won three. From 1824 to 1901, these were years of battle between Asantes and the British. The first was in 1824. The British governor was called Sir Charles McCarthy. Our ancestors named that war Battle of the Dead. Our ancestors won the war, cut off the head of the British governor, That's what I'm talking about. and brought his head as a trophy to Asante land. Yes, sweet. His head was displayed for 42 days, which is one month. Yes, in a Santi calendar. Because of this, the British never fought with us again till 1874. They came back so strong and defeated us. And as a result, they burnt down the first Asante Palace, which was at Edum, where the military museum is. You see, when they burned down our palace, they built a military castle there, which has now also become a museum. Afterwards, they signed an agreement with our ancestors in 1874 that at the end of every month, our ancestors are to pay them an amount of gold. Now, this was a revenge on the part of the British because in 1826, we defeated them in Accra. And our ancestors took the kings of Christianburg Castle, which belonged to the British. And in 1826, all the way to 1874, the British were paying tax to the Asante land. So when they also defeated us, they said we should pay us. We, we were paying. Till so we got an 18-year-old king. Let's open to page 12. The youngest ever to become a king in Asante land. Here he was old, but he was 18 years when he became king. Page 12. His name is Nana Prempe the first. When he became king, the British came back to him demanding that he should pay the gold because it is an agreement that has been made. Let's listen to the reply of our king. Our king told the British that he won't pay any money because it was not him that signed that agreement. It's his uncle and his uncle is dead. So if the British want their money, he can help them get it. They should go to the cemetery. <laughs> if they get to the cemetery, they should ask for the ghost of his dead uncle and take their money from the ghost of his dead uncle. Yes. The saying they didn't go down well with the British, so they declared another war on our ancestors. Mm -hmm. Now, our king said he won't fight. Not because he was a coward, but because during his time as being a king, there was a civil war in the kingdom. His elder brother wanted the throne, and it was given to him being the youngest. So the kingdom was divided. Some were for his elder brother, <coughs> some were for him. So he thought it wise that if he is to go to war, he will lose. So he said he won't fight. 
because of that, the British exiled him to Elmina Castle in Cape Coast. They later on took him to Sierra Leone and finally took our 18 year old king to Seychelles Island. He spent 27 years in prison. In his absence, the British came back demanding for the gold stool, the stool I showed you. Now, how can we give something so precious to a foreigner? Because of this, the gods placed their spirit in a woman. And that woman single-handedly declared war on the British. And her name was Ya Asantua. That is the queen mother with the gun on her laps in page 12. She was 65 years old when she declared war on the British. Now it seems to me that I'm diverting a little in, in the history of our African heritage. Among males and females, those that did a lot of damage to, let me say, the colonial masters were women. Mm. Amen. In our part, it's Yas Antoine, back in America, was Harriet Tubman, which I believe you all know. Yes. And that is the main reason why in Asante land, we don't take women lightly. We don't joke with them. Even the Asante royal throne belonged to the women, not the men. The queen mother can dethrone a king, but the king can never dethrone a queen mother, no matter what the queen mother do. Because the throne belongs to the women. After the war, Yasantua was defeated eventually. So Yasantua brought an idea that it is the ghost who they want. So why don't we make a fake one and give it to them? Asantis made a fake gold used to and we gave it to the British. <laughs> a fake gold used to and we gave it to them. Recently they've returned it. <laughs> it's at Premier Sikhem Museum in Cultural Center. <laughs> After the war, Yas Santa was also exiled to Seychelles Island, but she died there after 15 years in prison. Yeah. Since the establishment of this kingdom, we've had 16 Asante kings and 14 Asante queen mothers. But there is the issue. When you see a king and a queen mother, it's not a husband and a wife. And it's not a father and a daughter. It is a brother and a sister or a mother and a son. Because we practice matrilineal system of inheritance. Now let's start from all the way from the first page. Let me show you how the system has been. The first page is the current king who is a brother to the queen mother who is at the second page. So right now it's a brother and a sister ruling the kingdom. Now when we go to all the way to page seven, here is also a brother and a sister. Nana Prempe the second and Nana Amasewenya. When we flip, here it is a, a, a mother and a son. A mother and a son. You see, we, we, we've not seen husband and wife because that is not how it is done here. And finally, when we come to page 12, it is also a mother and a son. So this is how our system is like. The reason we do this is because we believe that the pure blood of every child comes from the mother and not from the father. <coughs> In our Santa land, when you marry an Asante woman, the children are not yours. They belong to the woman and they belong to the family of the woman. That is why traditionally it is a responsibility of your brother to take care of your children more than his children. Yes. Because it is the children of your sister that is your pure blood, not your children. Yeah. That was how our sisters used to do. Now when I'm having a sister and I die, my properties don't go to my children. They go straight to my sister's children. That is how we do things here. We believe that when a man and a woman gives birth, the spirit of the child comes from the father. But the blood and the soul that made that child come from the mother. This even reflects in how we carry them in the palanquin. In the palanquin, 
we carry the Asante king on our shoulder and we carry the Asante queen mother on our head to show that the throne belongs to the women and not the men. I'm going to end on these two final things. We have four stools in Asante land. The first one is what I showed you in page 16, if we can go back there. That is the ghost stool. Nobody sits on it. The second stool we have is called the white stool. Or a sipim. Well, some is not in the book. But you see, the stool that the king is sitting on, I think we can see. Okay. Now, page 16 there. Have you seen the stool that the ghost stool is sitting on? That is the same stool that the king is sitting on. That stool is called the white stool or a sipping. And we have the kotoko stool. Let's flip to the face, the cover page of the book. You see the stool that the pokemon pine is on it. This stool. Yeah. The cover page, the pokemon pine. It's called kotoko stool. Kotoko is pokemon pine. Now, anytime we are going for war, we bring this stool out. So anytime you are an Asante man and you see that we've brought this stool out, it means there is war. You have to get yourself ready for war. If you play the coward and you run away, uh -huh. our ancestors will go for the war. When they come, if they come back, they will hit a sword in fire and they will stamp it on your forehead to make a mark there. Afterwards, you will tell all the beautiful Asante women that any Asante man you see having a mark on his forehead, don't marry him. <laughs> He's a coward. Yeah. And when you are already married, we will take your wife and children away from you mm. and we will give them to a brave Asante man. That's what I'm talking about. That's how it should be. Yes. 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 That's right. yes. Yeah. Apart from that, we have the black stew. Now, when the king is alive, he is having a white stew. But when the king dies, we blacken his white stew for it to become a black stew. For 42 days, we use the blood of a sheep, ashes, and eggs. We mix it together and we sprinkle it upon the white stew of the dead king for 42 days, which is one month. We believe that in the process of doing that, we are invoking the spirit of the dead king into his stool. Afterwards, we take it to the stool's room. So the stool's room is where we keep all the black stools of dead Asante kings. When we choose a new king, we blindfold him and we take him to the stool's room to touch any of the black stools. The first black stool that his hand will touch, the name on that stool becomes his stool's name. For example, the first page is current king. His original name is Kwekudia. He was born on a Wednesday. But when he was chosen to become a king, and he was taken to the stool's room, his hand touched on the black stool of Osei Tutu the first. That means that he will be called Osei Tutu the second. That is how they get their stools. We have four drums. One is a tremor, which we play during war to prepare ourselves for war. Two is a tumpine, which we play at the end of every month. So if you're an Asante and you hear that the tumpine is playing, it means the month has ended. Three is front on from, which we play to entertain the king and to dance Adwa and Kete. Can you kindly stand up? Yeah. Let me show you some moves. Oh my God. <laughs> All right. So when the drum is playing, you do this, you do this, you do this, and you do this, and you jump, and you do this, and you look down, and you do this. Now, what she just suggested, doing this means that she is uh, wrapping certain things up. Ah. And then she threw her hand to the left. It means everything at her left hand side and right, everything at her right hand side belongs to her. And she jumped and then came down and then she shook her hair. It means that nothing up there and nothing on earth was able to defeat her okay so i won't i won't show you the moves i want you to do it and let's see um, so it start by wrapping left no left first 
left right. first okay okay <laughs> left uh huh you wrap again right and then good and you jump and then you shake your head you look down and you shake your head that is the spirit that is the spirit everything in Asante land is for our spiritual well-being our dance our language our culture our customs nothing is against us all on the wall is known as Edinkra symbols they are deep ways our ancestors used to communicate among themselves without you who is not an Asante understanding what they are saying so the first one there is a symbol of worship when I talk about worship it's worship of our gods when we talk about gods we are talking about three people we are talking about the supreme being mm -hmm. we are talking about mother earth mm -hmm. and we are talking about our ancestors we believe that when you lived a good life and you die you are an ancestor mm -hmm. and you are a god and such people we want them to come back to us and that is what we call reincarnation so when i am a good person and i die and my family wants me back they will make a mark on my body when a family member within my family gives birth and it is me that I've come back, where they made the mark, the mark could be at the place of the newborn child. It means I have come back. So when we are pouring libation, we pour it also in the name of our ancestors. Because the life that they lived were more than gods. Thank you very much for visiting. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry for the inconvenience. Yeah, yeah. I have one question. Okay, any question? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, I think it was paid. If you want to take any of these books as a souvenir to somebody, yeah. you yes. can, right? Okay. Uh,